To create a high pass texture, we're going to use a high pass filter, but first we need to understand the concept behind actually using the high pass filter. So on the screen we have a nice grass texture here, and I can already see that we have some blotching up here, and maybe right here. Some of it, it just isn't really the same tonality. So what we can do are a few things. We can go in and maybe select the polygonal lasso tool. And then in that, we can choose a feather of maybe like 35. And we can begin to select these parts. So we select this little blotch. And then we can create a exposure. Simple as that. And then we can change the exposure to be brighter or lighter. And then we can also go into the actual filter or the feathering itself, and maybe we can make it a little bit more feathered on the edge so that we don't see it. So let's drop this down just a little, try to get where we are, and then we can do the same exact thing for this piece up here. So we'll go ahead and we can select this, and then we can select this and Actually, let's delete that layer mask, and then we'll apply this one. So we can change just a little bit. I can see it's not going to solve it all, but at least we got somewhere. If I were to switch back and forth, you can see that we now have something that's a little bit more of the same tonality. So I'm going to press Control e and just combine them all. The next thing that I want to do is I want to use the high pass filter. And if I go up into Filter and I go to Other, I can immediately go to High Pass. And in this, we can see that there's a little bit going on. So let's remember that it's 10 on the pixels. And if we go to the extremes, now we've brought back all of this, uh, this difference. It's not going back to middle gray. And instead of just eyeballing it like we are there, we can actually bring up the histogram. And in this, we can see how we're a little bit closer than actually were before. Let me go ahead and cancel out, and we can see the shift right here. There's so much tonality in our image that if we were to bring it inside of the engine, we would see a repeating pattern, so the repetition would stand. Let me go ahead and do something really quickly, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a pattern, and we'll call this one High Pass Pat. So with that in place, we can go in here, and we can create our own pattern. So if we go to the pattern overlay, we can bring in our filter and we can select our actual scale. So if we bring it back, we can, we can kind of see what I'm talking about here. We have a lot of blotchiness that's in place. So what we want to do is remove that with the filter. So we're going to go back to the high pass. We can make it pretty close to where we want to be. Let's make it 10. We'll keep it at default. And now with this, we have high passed our texture to be used in the engine. So we'll just go ahead and save it. And we can save this as Albedo Terrain. And then we'll call this one DIF and then we'll click Save. And then what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to make sure that we have a terrain that's high pass. So I don't see it in my listing there. And if I come down here, I can click Terrain Albedo High Pass, and then this will be the correct setting to export it. And then I'll go ahead and click Generate Output and click OK. And this has been a basic explanation of how you create your terrain textures to be used in the engine. Now you would go on inside of the editor and you would create a terrain material, but that is outside of the scope of this tutorial. This is solely about what high passing is, how you can use a histogram to understand how you can get everything more towards middle gray and you don't have as much variety, so then you don't see the repetition in your patterns when you bring it inside of the engine for your own level.